Step into the world of basketball legends with Michael Jordan shoes, where iconic design meets unmatched performance. From the courts to the streets, these shoes have left an indelible mark on sneaker culture and sports history. Michael Jordan, often hailed as the greatest basketball player of all time, revolutionized the game, and his signature shoes were an integral part of his journey. In this exploration, we delve into the impact of Michael Jordan's shoes, uncovering how they not only elevated his game, but also sparked a global sneaker phenomenon. In 1984, Michael Jordan agreed to work with Nike to promote their special basketball shoes called Air Jordan. Before that, Nike was facing some difficulties, but Michael Jordan's endorsement helped them become successful. Other athletes like Carmelo Anthony and Roy Jones Jr. also supported the brand. Interestingly, Jordan actually liked Adidas and Converse shoes more but his manager played a crucial role in making the Nike deal happen. So, Air Jordans played a big part in making Nike a popular brand in the sports shoe industry. The Air Jordan shoes were first offered for $2.5 million, along with additional payments based on sales and other benefits for five years. When the shoes with a logo of a winged basketball and priced at $65 were made and put in stores, they became very popular. But the NBA later said Michael couldn't wear the black and red shoes and fined him $5,000 for every game he wore them. Despite this, Nike, the company that made the shoes, didn't want to lose the opportunity for good advertising. So they paid the fines and let Jordan keep wearing the shoes. This made people even more eager to buy the same shoes or ones that had looked similar to themselves. The red and black Air Jordans are really famous, but they have had many problems. Even Michael Jordan, who they're named after, wanted to stop wearing them. The first Air Jordans were even called the banned versions. The issue was that when Jordan wore these shoes in NBA games, he got in trouble because they didn't follow the league's uniform rules. But Nike, the company that makes the shoes, paid for fines so he could keep wearing them in games. Instead of trying to hide the trouble, Nike used it to their advantage. They started promoting the shoes as something special and forbidden, which made people want them even more. When Michael Jordan won a special basketball competition in 1986-1987, the logo on this famous Air Jordan shoes changed to what we see today, the Jumpman logo. The price of the shoes also went up to $100 per pair. After a few years, Michael Jordan wanted to cancel his contract, but then he had a face-to-face -face talk with Tinker Hatfield, who was in charge of designing the shoes. Hatfield asked for Jordan's ideas and feedback on how to improve the shoes. Jordan decided to stay committed to the project and the rest is history. The changes they made were a big success. Michael Jordan wasn't completely satisfied with the original shoes named after him, so he suggested a redesign. The new Air Jordan 3 shoes were made with a three-quarter cut, making them more comfortable and lighter than other shoes. People loved the changes, and the shoes sold very quickly. Michael Jordan and Tinker Hatfield continued to work together on the Air Jordan designs until the 15th version. By 1997, the Air Jordan brand became a part of Nike, but you won't find the word Nike or the Nike swoosh logo on the Air Jordan shoes. They have their unique Jumpman logo instead. The original red and black Air Jordans were extremely popular, and they were so popular that they had to make a comeback. Around 2001, Nike brought back several old models of the Jordan brand. This made Nike fans happy because of how they liked the similar price range and the Nike Air logo on the shoe's tongue. After that, there were more old-style releases in the following years, but not all of them were as liked by people. The version from 2009, in particular, caused a lot of debate among Nike and Jordan collectors. The problem was that they had the Jumpman logo on the tongue instead of the Nike Air logo. 
for people who really loved having only Nike products. This change was almost like doing something very disrespectful to their passion. The Band Air Jordans became very popular because they felt extra soft and comfortable. Then, Nike decided to make a special version of these shoes with a top part made entirely from a smooth and shiny fabric called satin. They also made matching sports clothes to go with these shoes. Even though these satin Air Jordans look luxurious, they might not be as good for sports and might not last as long as the regular ones. But because they are so special and rare, they are considered valuable and are sold at a very high price. Some people even resell them for more than $2,000. The Air Jordan shoe line, from its inception to the latest release, showcases a rich history of iconic designs. Starting with the Air Jordans 1 in 1985, designed by Peter Moore, featuring the Nike swoosh logo, the series evolved with Tinker Hatfield's contributions, such as the introduction of the Jumpman logo and visible air units. Over the years, the line expanded with different designers, incorporating diverse inspirations like the F-22 Raptor fighter jet and the Black Panther. The latest iteration of the Air Jordan XXX3 features fast-fit technology and a laceless design. The Air Jordan legacy continues to captivate sneaker enthusiasts worldwide. Michael Jordan makes a lot of money from Nike's Air Jordan shoes, around $400 million every year. This is a huge amount of money and shows that Nike is making massive profit overall. In 2001, the total revenue from the Air Jordan brand was reported to be over $4.8 billion, which is a staggering amount. Back in 1985, Nike made $162 million from the Air Jordan shoes, which seemed like a lot at the time. But now, compared to the money they make from the brand each year, that amount seems tiny. Over the years, Michael Jordan has earned more than $1.3 billion from the Air Jordan brand, and this number keeps growing as the shoe sales continue to increase. If he's making $400 million every year now, it's predicted that he'll cross the $2 billion mark in the next two years. Overall, Michael Jordan is said to be worth around $1.7 billion, and a significant portion of that comes from his deal with Nike. When Michael Jordan first signed with Nike in 1984, he probably never imagined that he would make so much money. Initially, he wanted to sign with Adidas, but Nike convinced him to join by allowing him to design his own shoe. This decision turned out to be crucial and has had a huge impact on the fashion industry. Many other NBA stars like LeBron James have also signed deals with Nike because of Michael Jordan's success and influence. His incredible career after basketball has made him one of the richest people globally and a well-known global icon. The legacy of Michael Jordan's shoes is much more than just a tribute to a legendary athlete. It's a symbol of inspiration for athletes and sneaker enthusiasts alike. So, whether you're a die-hard basketball fan or simply appreciate the art of design, Michael Jordan's shoes have undoubtedly left a lasting impact that continues to resonate around the world.